Thank you, thank you very much. And don't forget, this video was made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Want to support me? The link is on the screen. Sincerely yours, Visual Pony, and enjoy this audiobook. Okay, hello there guys and welcome to another segment of Stories I Will Definitely Not Read. This time I have chosen a story that was actually requested from me. Until back in the day when this when a particular one of you, I think his name was the Pony PC Gamer, was talking to me in my comment section and mentioned this story to me, I did not even know it existed. So today I have chosen a story that is a little bit older, it is from 2012, past since, like I did the last time, isn't that of, isn't a new one either, but this is a little bit different. It is tagged in the categories adventure, comedy and romance. So, I personally will definitely read the story for myself, because I find the premise very interesting, but I will not make an audiobook of it, because there already is an audiobook of it. Granted, the guy doing it chose this story as his very first fanfiction reading, but we all have to start somewhere, and believe me, he does a much better jo job at it than I did when I started out. So, let's reveal finally to you what story I have chosen. I mean you most likely know already because you have clicked on this video and it is titled Stories I Will Definitely Not Read My Roommate is a Vampire. So let me read the summary for you, the description of this story. There was only one explanation for all of it. All of the strange, erratic behavior, her irrational fear of the sun, her nocturnal habits of locking herself in the dark and closing all the blinds, wearing her sunglasses everywhere, even inside. It was time to invest in some silver, garlic and a wooden stake. So, you might already know who I'm talking about here, or what the description is talking about. It's, of course, a story with Octavia and Vinyl Scratch. Two of my favorite ponies, even though I must say I prefer Octavia. I like her. I, I like Octavia. So this story is from two uh, 2012, was written by Dennis the Menace. By the way, there was a TV show of the same name for the younger ones amongst you who do not know this. That was damn hilarious and a part of my childhood. You should look it up. I think there should be a few episodes at least on YouTube. I don't really know actually. Yes, there are. There are. So... Let's begin the first chapter of this. I will read a little bit of little bit of it as last time so you can yeah get an impression of this story and then I will as last time give you a little snippet from the audiobook that was already created and will reveal to you from whom it was and give you a link My Roommate is a Vampire by Dennis the Menace Chapter 1 Give me something sweet to bite She's a nice mare, really. Honest. Certainly not the type of respectable pony my mother would want me to associate myself with. The type you crossed the street to avoid. The shady kind of pony up to no good with a penchant for mischief. Uncouth, undignified. Oh yes, vinyl scratch was all of those things. And I couldn't have asked for a better friend. She was a rough and tumble tomboy, no doubt. Her mane was an absolute disaster, 
just awful, impossible to tame. And those colors... <laughs> Her sense of fashion left something to be desired. A hoodie in the middle of summer? Why not? Her table manners were impeccable. I'm joking. <laughs> yes, that was a fake laugh. Was it wrong for me to laugh when she snorted milk out of her nose? Or when she had lettuce in her teeth? Good idea, Vinyl. Let's have a belching contest in a five-star restaurant. I'm sure no pony will mind. Vinyl's scratch was definitely confident. She radiated confidence. She had something that I just couldn't put my hoof on. Swagger, maybe? Shall we strut down the sidewalk with our noses in the air next to those stuffy cantalot nobles? Of course we shall, my dear. Of course we shall, my dear. She definitely knew how to draw attention, get others to notice, make herself known. Her mere presence could change the atmosphere of the room. She was loud and proud and obnoxious, and I couldn't help but wonder why I still hung around her. Her taste in music left something to be desired. It was obvious we would butt heads. She preferred something of the electronic variety. Mine was a more organic me Mine was a more organic medium with wooden strings and soul. But it was all right. We were complete opposites, Vinyl and I. Understatement of the century. She was a yin to my yang. The o red oni, blue oni. We had a laugh-hate relationship, if you could call it that. Come on, Akti, up here! Vinyl called, dashing up the stairs. It wasn't my idea moving in with her. Really? I just went along with it. Financial reasons, you know. Wait till you get a load of this. Ta-da! She pushed open the door with a flourish and bow. I gawked, running inside, turning around the foyer. This place is great, I said with a haughty sniff. It's certainly... It was certainly not Manhattan, and it wasn't the Cantalot penthouse of my dreams either, but it would have to do. Already pre-furnished, how wonderful. The paint wasn't peeling, so that was a good sign. Not like my ding old, not like my dingy old apartment. The carpet smelled fresh. Straight ahead from the door there was a foyer, a coffee table, two couches, some vases with wilting flowers, then a balcony with a glass door with a great view of the castle. To the left, a kitchen with a fire extinguisher. Break glass in case of vinyl scratch. Dibs! She yelled, bolting off down the hallway. She was a peculiar mare, an enigma. I could never tell what she was thinking. Her eyes, goodness, I had no idea what she looked like without those gaudy sunglasses on. She wore them in her sleep, probably in the shower as well, if I took a peek. Not that I would, mind you. I was just curious about her eyes. Shut up! What secrets are you hiding, Vinyl Scratch? What secrets? There were no secrets between us. I knew her favorite color, songs, places to go on a Friday night. But did I really know Vinyl Scratch, the mare behind the sunglasses and bravado? Or was I only scratching the surface? Friends? Family? Did she have any? Or was she raised by a pack of wolves? I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. 
for her cutie mark. How did she get it? It was a mystery. She was a mystery mare with an air of mysteriousness surrounding her. So, this concludes the first part of, let's say, this little story I will definitely not read. Or better said, of this first chapter of this story. It, it isn't even halfway through of the f first chapter, but I don't want to read all of it, you know. Oh, it is a little bit over halfway, because those chapters are quite short, I just noticed. Um, thing is... Yeah, guys, I could make an audiobook of this, but I don't want to tread on anyone's toes. And as I said, there already is an audiobook of this, which was made by... Okay, let me check this. Let me check this. I had it open here in a tab and um, not quite sure where it ended up because suddenly... Ah, there it is. Ah, no, not that one. Ark. Yeah, I'm very sorry that you can't see my face or my uh, screen right now, but I, I don't want to, uh, you know, the room I'm recording in right now isn't fit to be shown on camera. My screen would be, but I don't want to because I have so many tabs open and some are like private stuff. So, yeah. So, this audiobook was actually made, or the audiobook that was completed of the story, was made by a bored brony. He did a few other fic readings as well. I'll check out his channel real quick. You can find the videos there, I will link them here. He did stuff like, uh, of course, My Roommate is a Vampire, then... Angel Swift or On a Cross and Arrow. Yeah, you know, I haven't uh, like listened to all of his stuff yet, but I will definitely read um, My Roommate is a Vampire for my own enjoyment. And now here you have a little passage from his reading of My Roommate is a Vampire. She's a nice mare, really. Honest. Certainly not the type of respectable pony my mother would want me to associate myself with. The type you cross the street to avoid. The shady kind of pony up to no good. With a penchant for mischief. Uncouth, undignified. Oh yes. Final Scratch was all of these things. And I couldn't have asked for a better friend. She was rough and tumble tomboy. She was a rough and tumble tomboy, no doubt. Her mane was an absolute disaster. Just awful. Impossible to tame. And those colors. Ugh. Her sense of fashion left something to be desired. A hoodie in the middle of summer? Why not? Her table manners were impeccable. I'm joking. <laughs> yes, that was a fake laugh. So, that was that, and for everyone who wants to check out the story, there is a link in the description, I will link it here on the screen as well, if I kinda don't forget this again, because I always kinda forget to put links on the screen. Uh, but that's my my thing, I sometimes forget this, or and if it's like annotations on the screen, I usually forget them. So. Go give him some love. This reading is... Seriously, I listened to the first part of it and it is okay. I think he could improve a bit, but hey, it's his first ever fic, fic reading. And if you go back to the stuff I did back in the day, which was Lonely Dr. Hoofs and um, I think it was Children of the Night, you will definitely see that he has a better quality and does a better job than I did back then. So, check him out. I'm signing off. This was Stories I will definitely not read once again. See you next time and I hope you enjoyed this. 
Also, don't forget, I do have a Patreon account. The link is also in the description and for everyone who wants only to make a one-time donation, that link is also there. Sincerely yours, Visual Pony.